everybody, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I just want to start by saying thank you so much to all the new viewers that come to my channel and watch my videos. I obviously track the stats and I know that I get a lot of new visitors. So I just want to say thank you so much for A, finding my channel, but also for watching my videos as well. But I do have a big favour to ask. I'm really trying to get my subscribers up. So please remember to hit that subscribe button. You will then get notified as long as you allow the notifications about all all my new videos. That's also my LinkedIn live shows as well. So today's video, I'm covering off a subject. Well, it's actually a question I've been asked by a few people recently. And I always try and cover videos that tackle problems and issues that I know consultants are dealing with at the moment. And this is one of them. How do I deliver negative feedback to my candidates? Now, this can be a really tricky thing to do in our job, especially if we have a particularly good relationship with the candidate. We don't wanna deliver bad news. It's not the nicest thing to do. And for any of you new recruiters out there, However great you deliver the feedback, I just want you to know that occasionally you will get somebody that still takes it badly. God, I've had some people cry on the phone to me. But you've got to remember, and this is something I want to point out from the get-go, their reaction is out of your control. If they choose to be rude to you, to me, it's a big indicator of whether you deal with that candidate again. But if they're upset, it shows they care. And look, at the end of the day, you've got to understand that people pin a lot of their hopes on the jobs you're speaking to them about. So there is going to be some emotion tied in with this as well. So first and foremost, just remember that the reaction won't always be positive in your eyes, but we're gonna focus on the things today that you can do to deliver that feedback in a way where the candidate will really, really appreciate it and it will strengthen your relationship with them. Another thing to cover off is, I do hear sometimes people saying, oh, I don't bother delivering feedback to every candidate. If it's a no, or if it's negative, I haven't got time, I just leave it. And look, I'm gonna be completely honest with you because I always am on this channel. That is bullshit. What is one of the number one things that people say when they're talking crap about recruitment agencies or recruitment consultants? It's always, well, they never got back to me, they never gave me feedback, they only used me when they wanted me and to be honest I'm sick of hearing that type of opinion I want everybody that watches this channel everybody I train and come into contact with to be a top quality recruiter and part of that comes from delivering feedback to all your candidates there's also a lot of benefits to giving them feedback they can learn from their mistakes you know whether or not you're going to deal with them in the future based on their reaction which we've already covered off and they can sleep easy at night because they've got a final answer and they know whether they can focus on other roles halt their job search, carry on looking, who knows? It could be a big thing for them to get this feedback. So you need to give it to them. I'm not gonna go into masses of depth on this. I'm gonna keep it really short and sweet and simple. When you receive feedback for your candidate and it is a no, what you need to make sure is that you're bearing in mind the candidate you're telling. Now, some of your candidates will be very direct very straight to the point. When I say unemotional, what I mean is, you know, they're not as sensitive as some of your other candidates. Those are the people you know that will want you to ring them and just say it as it is. Not brush around it, not have a bit of a chit chat for five minutes before. They'll just be desperate to know. So you've got to read the room. Some of your other candidates, however, will be more sensitive. You know they'll be more emotional about it. So you know that you've got to be sensitive around your delivery. For your more sensitive candidates, it's introducing it by picking up the phone and first of all checking how they are and then introducing it in a more sensitive way. Now, when I'm getting feedback from my clients, obviously, if the candidate's completely bombed, this is different. But if they're a no because, say, they've just missed out or they answered a question not as well as another candidate, then I want to get the client to tell me what they've done well as well so I can give mixed feedback. So when I'm delivering that negative feedback, I would always tell them it's a no straight away. For example, really sorry, but I've spoken to X client and they've fed back that unfortunately they're not going to progress with you to the next stage or they're not gonna offer you the position. But I've got some really good feedback from you that I'm gonna go over. I'm gonna talk you through it because it's gonna be really useful because we'll know all the things you've done well and all the things we can work on. So the next interview you go to, we can make sure that we're really up in your performance. I'm gonna help you do that. So although we've delivered that negative news, we're showing them I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna give you some great feedback that's gonna help you learn and develop. I'm sure you've all heard of a shit sandwich. So something good, something negative, something good in terms of feedback 
feedback. I wouldn't say it's imperative for you to deliver it in that way, but I did used to do that sometimes, especially for the more sensitive candidates. That way, they're ending the call a little bit more positive. Then I would take some time reflecting with them. What do you think about the feedback? What do you think you could do differently next time? I just make sure I spent as much time with them as needed for the, to leave on a positive note. Some people were just happy to take the feedback and the call's done. Other people did really want to talk about it and, and understand it. If that was going to help my relationship with them and help them learn even better. And it's all about reflecting back if there were positives what they did well and need to keep on doing, and then whatever the negatives were, talking about that in a constructive way so they can learn from it. Now, you will know some of your clients really well. You will know the picky ones. You will be able to read between the lines of some of the feedback, and you can provide that extra insight. That is what a consultant does. Breaking it down for them, explaining maybe this manager is really picky. I told you this in the interview prep, so I wouldn't worry too much about X because he normally picks that thing out. So it's putting them at ease as well. It's making them feel okay about it. You don't want them getting off the phone and feeling so shit that they think, oh, I can't be asked to continue looking or I'm completely put off those clients. If the candidate has had feedback that isn't bad enough for you to not work with them anymore, then you still want to bear in mind that the relationship with them is number one. If, however, you have some feedback from a, can from a client, sorry, that is awful, and you just think there's too many red flags here, I've got to bin this candidate, I can't work with them, too much of a risk, you still need to communicate it. I used to quite enjoy these conversations to be honest, but I do like a challenge, especially if they've done something wrong, it's important they know. I used to intro the call and just say, look, I'm ringing with feedback from your interview last week. Now I wanted to have a really good chat with you about this because the feedback unfortunately is not great and then I would go into it. Now, we should have done an interview debrief with them. If they thought it went great, I would get them to revisit. Look, just bear in mind that they're quite concerned about some things. Let's go back to the interview. You said X, Y, and Z went well. How are you feeling about it now? I, I get them to reflect, because it's a worry if they still think they did amazingly. If they then say, well, actually, I've been thinking over the weekend, and I did swear, and I did wear cowboy boots to my interview, and, I did high five the manager. So, you know, then they might reflect on it. But if they haven't, then that is a big concern. And then I would go through the feedback with them and ask them, what do you think about this feedback? If they don't agree with it and they react badly, then I definitely know I shouldn't deal with them again. And if you have decided that you're absolutely not gonna deal with them, you need to communicate that because you need to create that boundary. They need to know to expect no more contact from you. You can communicate that in a way that is, for example, look, unfortunately, based on that feedback, we're not gonna be able to support you any further in your search, or I'm not gonna be able to help you with our clients. But then what you can do is maybe give them some recommendations. Try other agencies, research interview etiquette, whatever you wanna to recommend to them. I used to be a little bit naughty and refer them to my competitors, but I'll leave that one up to you. So then there is the expectation there that they will not be hearing from you and the relationship is over. Do you remember I was talking about how if people don't have an answer, they don't know where they stand. With all the options we've covered off here, people have their answer. They know what to expect. They can make a next step for themselves then. I think that's really important. So that is today's video. If you have any agonizing questions about delivering negative feedback, if you've experienced something that was particularly challenging, or you're going through a difficulty with a candidate at the moment, do not hesitate to contact me. Reach out to me on LinkedIn. You can even comment on this video. I will be here to answer your questions. Remember guys, hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, you'll get notified about any new videos that get loaded, as well as my LinkedIn lives. But look guys, I've loved having you here with me today, good luck with delivering your feedback to your candidates, and I will speak to you very soon. Bye!